When we think about the stereotype of the Facebook mom, we tend to think about pseudoscience and someone in a tinfoil hat, conspiracy theory style, misinformation spreaders, just kind of generally. We think of moms that see something at face value, don't look at sourcing even remotely. They are quick to spread this information to all their friends, thus allowing the vicious cycle of misinformation to continue. And that is how things like today's video topic even become an issue. So today we're gonna be talking about MMS, otherwise known as the thing that pops up in the news that reads something along the lines of like, these parents think feeding their children bleach will cure their autism. Oh yeah, we're going down that path today. So hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Blair or the Illuminati and today I'm gonna be talking about MMS. This topic has been pretty highly requested so I figured I'd take a shot at it. Especially with the state of the world what it is right now, MMS has actually begun making its way into the news again and I want to preface this video by saying that there's a lot of weird claims in this video about what MMS does, some really, really strange theories. So please don't form your opinions until the very end. So with all of that said, let's dive right in and talk about what MMS is and why it's been so problematic. In case you are not aware, MMS stands for Miracle Mineral Supplement. And I know when a lot of people hear supplement, you might be thinking vitamins, but this is kind cut and dry, just the process of drinking bleach. Yeah, drinking bleach, literally. It's made from a mixture between sodium chloride solution and an acid, thus creating chlorine dioxide, an industrial cleaner. This can be used to disinfect drinking water, especially in countries where clean drinking water isn't readily available. Even with the teeniest, tiniest little bit of a dose of 0.1 ppm or parts per million ratio, you can start to reach some dangerous thresholds. So since the FDA has described this MMS concoction as the equivalent of bleach with a 28% chlorine dioxide ratio, I'm going to refer to it as bleach at times during this video. I don't believe in sugarcoating it or using MMS as the only terminology when in reality, this isn't some miracle mineral supplement, it's bleach. So let's cut the bullshit and call it what it really is. If you've got even a shred of sense in your body, you would know not to drink this. You're not about to go under your kitchen sink or into your cabinets and start chugging Clorox because some dude on the internet says it's healing. But unfortunately, this is exactly what Jim Humble, the inventor of MMS, told people to do. And what's scariest about this is that people actually listen to him. Jim Humble is a self-published former Scientologist. I really don't wanna call him an author here because I feel like that's giving him way too much credit when absolutely none is due. I also honestly don't have time to explain the nonsensical beliefs of Scientology right now, but I'll say that it speaks volumes as to who he is as a person. Needless to say, it's another very cultish environment, so it's no surprise that's exactly what he's bred here. And I know there's gonna be people in the comment section saying, Blair, why don't you do a video on Scientology? Do a video on Scientology. They're probably the one group I don't wanna touch for a variety of reasons, but they're fucking scary and I just don't wanna go down that path. So back to Jim here, he has a self-published book that he released in 2006 called The Miracle Mineral Supplement of the 21st Century, which MMS supporters, I'm sure, use to back up their claims, like the Holy Bible of drinking bleach, very similar. This reminds me kind of of Jilly Juice on steroids. Someone may have the intentions of wanting to help sick people, but it ends up so backwards that you've got people drinking poison. So just like with that story, I'm gonna start with the source, Jim's words and his book. So let's see what he has to say for himself before we get into the obvious reasons why drinking bleach isn't good for you. On his website, Jim says the following, I want to tell you about a breakthrough that can save your life or the life of a loved one. In 1996, while on a gold mining expedition in South America, I discovered that chlorine dioxide quickly eradicated malaria. Since that time, it has proven to restore partial or full health to hundreds of thousands of people suffering from a wide range of disease, including cancer, diabetes, hepatitis A, B, C, Lyme disease, MRSA, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, HIV, AIDS, malaria, autism, infections of all kinds, arthritis, high cholesterol, acid reflux, kidney or liver disease, aches and pains, allergies, urinary tract infections, digestive problems, high blood pressure, Jesus, fuck, it keeps going. Obesity, parasites, tumors and cysts, depression, sinus problems, eye disease, ear infections, 
dengue fever, skin problems, dental issues, problems with prostate, erectile dysfunction, and the list goes on. This is by far not a comprehensive list. I know it sounds too good to be true, but according to feedback I have received over the past 20 years, I think it's safe to say MMS has the potential to overcome most diseases known to mankind. It is important to note that MMS does not cure disease. MMS is an oxidizer. It kills pathogens and destroys poisons. When these are reduced or eliminated in the body, then the body can function properly and thereby heal. I often say the body heals the body. MMS helps to line things up so the body can do just that. Many of these diseases he lists aren't even the same at all or even remotely related. You've got arthritis and cancer grouped in with depression, UTIs, sinus problems, and eye disease. What? Tell me how something like that is going to fix an eye disease, but also cure depression. But also like, seriously, let me know. If medicine had a cure-all, one single solution for everything, we wouldn't need multiple pills, specialists, and different kinds of treatment for different issues. I'm not saying some issues can't be related, but even without a medical degree here, I'm confident enough that this is something that just can't cure cancer. Now, Jim does say that MMS does not cure diseases, but he also says that he's witnessed MMS restore partial or full health to people with all of these things. So I'm willing to bet he says MMS simply isn't a cure, so the FDA can't come after him as hard. Jilly Juice claims stated that her juice would make your body stronger to fight off anything thrown at it, more so than saying it was a treatment. Seems like MMS has also used really similar wording. All right, years of science-based research, you can go home because we have found out that we only need salty cabbage water and bleach to make our bodies stronger. There we go, guys. That was the whole video. Thank you for showing up. Just kidding. Before I get too deep to show you how stupid this all really is, we really do need to go over Jim's book. After all, if you're gonna disprove a theory, it's important to know the entire theory, the full extent of ridiculousness. While I absolutely support buying books and supporting authors. I, uh, I'll be honest, I found this PDF on the internet of two of his books and I really have no intention whatsoever of giving him my money and support. If you think I'm terrible for that, then Sorry, I promise I support authors that aren't actively trying to poison their readers. Anyways, the book starts off with this. I hope you do not think that this book tells about just another very interesting supplement that can help some people after taking it for several months. Great grammar there, Jim. Not so, this miracle mineral supplement works in a few hours. The number one killer of mankind in the world today is malaria, a disease that is usually overcome by this supplement in only four hours in most cases. This has been proven through clinical trials in Malawi, a country in Eastern Africa. In killing the malaria parasite in the body, there was not a single failure. More than 75,000 malaria victims have taken the Miracle Mineral Supplement and are now back to work and living productive lives. After taking the Miracle Mineral Supplement, AIDS patients are often disease-free in three days and other diseases and conditions simply disappear. If patients in the nearest hospital were treated with this Miracle Supplement, over 50% of them would be back home within a week. For more than 100 years, clinics and hospitals have used the active ingredients in this supplement to sterilize hospital floors, tables, equipment, and other items. Now, this same powerful germ killer can be harnessed by the immune system to safely kill pathogens in the human body. Look, I won't pretend that there's zero truth in Jim's statements, but that's just the trouble with these snake oil salesmen. They mix the truth in with the lies so that it helps you believe and digest everything they say. So let's try to decipher what's real and what's a lie straight from the top. First of all, the leading cause of death worldwide is heart disease by a long shot. Malaria isn't even the worst disease out there currently, tuberculosis is. Historically, yes, malaria has the most numbers attributed to it though. But as of 2006, when Jim was writing this, malaria wasn't and has not been the world's largest killer for quite some time. So you can see how that statement is quite misleading. As for the hospitals using MMS, there's no gray area here. That's a bold faced lie. MMS doesn't treat AIDS. I can't believe I even have to say those words. The facts that he got twisted here, if I had to take a guess, or that bleach has been used effectively to prevent HIV. In San Francisco, community outreach programs 
groups distributed bleach to drug users that were at a high risk of HIV because of dirty needles. Not to drink or inject, just to flush out their needles. If they were going to use anyway, this was a method of keeping their needles clean to prevent whatever diseases may be in there. That's it. 20 years after that study, Jim's going around saying MMS rids people of AIDS and not using sources for his information. If you're going to use facts to back up your book, Jim, then where are those sources? Where is that proof? Show me the numbers and show me those case studies. Bleach is used as a cleaner in hospitals. Yes, I won't even pretend to deny that, but using that as an argument is about as effective as saying that since laundry detergent cleans your clothes, we should all be bathing in it too. Jim goes on to talk about oxygen and atom changes on page 26, attempting to bring in some kind of science into his book. I don't know. The way he explains things just don't make any sense. I feel like he's trying to talk over people or use this as his research but then again, there's no sources and he has no training in health sciences and references no data throughout the entire section. In fact, all the numbers he throws up don't have any evidence of basis in reality. Articles written about Jim have the same issue. Humble claimed to have registered 75,000 successful treatments of malaria with his miracle product. Strange, but I can't find any of these spectacular results documented in the scientific literature. Wouldn't you think that the discovery of such a simple cure for malaria would merit publication? Surely in Nobel Prize would be in the offing. Ah, I know, it must be those dastardly jealous scientists or the evil pharmaceutical companies that are preventing publication. Yep, must be. If this many people were treated, you'd think people everywhere would know about it. You'd think that anyone who tries MMS would also be treated, but it's funny, isn't it? How documented cases of people trying MMS have had disastrous and tragic results. But according to Jim, even the World Health Organization told him that their test didn't work and Jim didn't believe them. He says here, I made a contract with the World Health Organization. Before my trip to Kenya and Uganda, I had written quite a few letters to the World Health Organization, which evidently didn't want to appear like they were not interested. They returned one of my letters saying that they had a program in which they tested various drugs that might have some effect on malaria. They were interested in the MMS they wrote. After some discussion, they sent me a contract to sign. We negotiated a bit, changed some points, and I finally signed their contract. I sent them a bottle of the MMS. About a year and a half later, after I returned to Africa, I finally got a letter from them stating that they were testing my solution in a separate lab. They had contracted with a doctor to do the testing for them. I was enthused to learn that the doctor was actually of doing the testing, but he tested it on mice and reported it simply didn't work. I was amazed, but he reported that it wouldn't cure mice or even improve their condition. There was nothing more I could say as I wasn't present when the testing was done. So at that time, 35,000 field patients were back to health, but since it wouldn't cure a mouse, sorry, but I don't believe him. I'm sorry, but sorry I don't believe him. That's a pretty ballsy thing to say when you have no documented laboratory research, but okay. For all the chapters before that, Jim goes on and on about how he used MMS in Africa. And you'd think that the World Health Organization would be able to find just, just even a shred of credibility in your solution. But then again, people like this can't be reasoned with. If their concoction doesn't work for you, then you're simply doing it wrong. If the World Health Organization tells you that this doesn't work, it's a conspiracy. He says 35,000 field patients in Africa were cured, but there's no test to prove that. If I really had to guess why people were telling him they felt better, I'd say it's the placebo effect. Some random foreigner comes into these impoverished African communities spouting off a bunch of scientific words that they may or may not understand. And they might just go along and believe him for the sake of being polite. I mean, they're desperate enough to believe the cure is real from their perspective. So, you know, why would he lie? Placebo effects might make them feel better and convince them that they're healed now, but it's really not going to rid your system of malaria. Again, this is just my own little theory, but considering we don't have any real concrete evidence or blood samples to say otherwise, mine is based in just as much science as his random claims are. Now that we've talked about the claims, let's get into the facts. Jim Humble put this MMS out there so surely people have used it and have had incredible benefits, right? I mean, with Jilly Juice and MMS being released, the world might just be in a state of incredible health and flourishing because people are so hygienic and healthier than ever, right? Nope, I mean, I assume we all know the answer to this one. 
but no. Canadian officials had to come out and say, hey, don't drink bleach because one man was hospitalized in 2008 and that's two years after Jim's book was released, just FYI. And just while I was looking this case up, I found another three in Australia from the same year in 2008. Since MMS became available in Australia in 2008, three people have been hospitalized in Melbourne after drinking it. A further seven people in New South Wales also had suffered adverse reactions. In the Melbourne cases, one patient was treated at the Austin hospital after incorrectly mixing the two solutions, while another who swallowed 50 drops instead of 15 was admitted to the Sengrim hospital. Both patients suffered from vomiting and headaches. A third person who was sick for three days and had difficulty swallowing was advised to seek urgent medical attention at the nearest hospital. But MMS's American creator, Jim Humble, who claims he discovered the substance's powers while looking for gold in South America rainforests in 1996, has defended it, saying 200,000 Americans are now using it to cure serious illnesses. Out of the estimated 2 million people who have already used MMS, there are at least 100,000 lives saved and more hundreds of thousands of people have overcome their suffering and returned to living their lives back in a normal fashion, Mr. Humble wrote on an internet site. What's more troubling about MMS, even more so than Jilly Juice, is that this stuff was being sold, not just marketed as a treatment for everything under the sun, Jim wasn't just pushing recipes alone, but sales. The same article states, the solution, which cost $24.50 for a starter's kit and $98 for a family pack is not registered for medical use in Australia. However, one of the online companies that supplies MMS here claims that it sells more than 40 bottles each day. And do you wanna know what the sickest part of this is? You can still purchase it. When I searched for where this stuff was selling, I expected it to be shut down. Considering this was 12 years ago, I was hoping the FDA would have come down hard on this, all the claims, and not allowed this to be sold. They've warned Jillian, so why not warn Jim? Why not make him take this down? It seems to me that as long as the labeling says, as this does on this Amazon listing, that it's not intended to cure or treat diseases, there's little that can be done. Plus, Jim isn't selling MMS himself, so it's not like he can be taken down for making false claims about a product he's selling. Even with these labels from sellers though, the comments say things like, use this for beer 19 treatment based on Jim Humble's book. So because it was made so readily available with the recipe right there, and since we all know, especially in these times, how desperate people are to try anything, more people made or bought MMS. The FDA did try to combat all these claims and said multiple times over the years, the FDA's drug approval process ensures that patients receive safe and effective drug products. Miracle Mineral Solution and similar products are not FDA approved and ingesting these products is the same as drinking bleach. Consumers should not use these products and parents should not give these products to their children for any reason. But people do dumb stuff. When nothing else works, when doctors can't seem to help, well, people turn to insane cures. And what's one of those things people were trying to cure with MMS? Autism. In 2015 and 2016, the brilliant idea that this bleach could cure autism came to light. And look, bleach can kill bacteria, but a neurological disorder? Even implying that MMS would work is like calling autism a disease, which it's not. The logic of this is so incredibly backwards that I can't even fight it. I feel like I'm trying to tell someone that the sky is not green or argue that poison is not good for you. If someone is so, so incredibly determined to believe something with so little evidence, it's a fight you can't really win. But hey, even if I can't change their minds, at least we can arm people with the logic to not fall for this, right? Well, one can hope anyway. Getting back to this MMS and autism link, one Mr. Edwards spoke out saying that MMS is the miracle autism cure. A BBC researcher bought the product and found something interesting. Through his website, Mr. Edwards sold the researcher one bottle of liquid labeled as 22.4% sodium chloride and a second labeled as 4% hydrochloric acid. When the BBC sent the chemicals to Kent Scientific Services, an independent laboratory, they were found to be 57 percent and 45 percent stronger than the advertised concentration respectively. So not only was Edwards selling them bleach, but it was up to 57 percent stronger than advertised. And Edwards isn't suggesting this be used on autistic adults either, as horrific as that would be. No, he's suggesting that babies ingest this product. I'm not going to say cure because I can get in trouble. I'd say purge. It can purge autism. Alzheimer's too. 170 children have had their diagnosis 
diagnosis removed of autism in four years. Mr. Edwards advised 27 drops of MMS per day for a baby administered with a baby's bottle. Of his own use, he said, I put it in my eyes, my nose, my ears, bathe in it, drunk it, breathed it in my lungs. I got injected in my butt with it. They're never going to shut me down. All they can do is put me in a prison cell. So first of all, gross. Second of all, where's your proof? And third, someone, please put him in that prison cell. Edwards, of course, is a huge supporter of Jim Humble and works with him in Jim's church. Yes, you guys, a church. It seems Jim wasn't satisfied peddling his cure online and founded a church in 2010 to promote his bleach. It's like a televangelist meets Jilly Juice meets Autism Speaks combination going on in there with as much illogical fuckery in one business. Multiple organizations have spoken out about this cure, further bringing up the issue in 2016. Unfortunately, ABC chose an Autism Speaks senior vice president to talk when they covered the story, but the guy brought up a good point. Many autistic children are nonverbal. Not all, but a lot may not even have the communication skills to say that it's hurting them, which this is rich coming from Autism Speaks considering that they supported the Rottenberg Center. Just saying. The Association for Science and Autism Movement, in no uncertain terms, tore Jim Humble and his church a new one. They wrote, according to the MMS website, Humble is an aerospace engineer who worked on the lunar module and the atomic bomb. In 2008, however, Humble admits that he does not have an engineering degree, Project Camelot, and claims to be a billion year old God from the Andromeda galaxy who was sent to protect and monitor Earth. Better yet, they sourced every case about this MMS not working, why it doesn't work, and shed some light about why people may try this in the first place. When a child is diagnosed with autism, the family likely feels a sense of urgency to find a treatment, and understandably so. The variety of therapies have continued to increase over the past 50 years since autism was first labeled. Because we do not know the cause of autism, many families take the approach of trying anything and everything, regardless of how implausible or outlandish it may seem. After all, what have they got to lose? Unfortunately, the everything but the kitchen sink method has the potential to actually cause harm or at the very least, perpetuate the current situation for which consumers are seeking treatment. In fact, research has demonstrated that the eclectic treatment, in other words, a combination of treatment methods used with one individual, actually results in less improvement over time on key behaviors associated with autism when compared to using one scientifically validated treatment, specifically intensive behavior analytic intervention. As described above with bleach therapy, the majority of the quick fixes, miracle cures, and breakthrough treatments available for autism have little to no sound evidence of effectiveness. Several have potential or known harmful side effects. Therefore, even when deciding on treatment for an individual with autism, consumers must avoid pseudoscientific treatments and invest in treatments validated scientifically. I found this pretty enlightening, honestly. I can't imagine ever, ever wanting to drink bleach or being desperate enough to try it. Just, it's just not in my mindset. And it will never be a cure for me for any of my ailments and it will never be on my radar. But it's incredibly useful that ASAT wrote this to appeal to people that may be in those shoes. The Autism Society also spoke out against this and in a briefer firm statement said that, The Autism Society is firm in its stance that while some people and organizations will claim to have a cure or treatment, there is no known cure for autism. The use of industrial bleach on any individual is not only barbaric, it is morally and ethically unacceptable and should never happen. The Autism Society encourages the appropriate authorities to take action against those responsible to stop these terrible actions and to help those affected by these unproven and highly dangerous approaches to helping a person with autism. And I know I'm gonna have some of the nitpickers in the audience tell me, no, it's saying an autistic person, not a person with autism. But that is what the quote said. I am reading it, take that one up with them. Unfortunately, despite these efforts, some people haven't listened. We can't know for sure exactly how many parents are trying MMS with their children, but without a doubt, some have. One Facebook page has over 7,000 members and one doctor in South Africa, Louise Lindenberg, tested three stool samples given to her by a parent who admitted to using chlorine dioxide on herself and her children. She found no evidence of said parasites. The microbiology did not reveal any parasites or even eggs, Lindenberg wrote in an email. Histology confirmed that it was a combination of mucus, plant material, probiotic flora, and gut cells. 
What she did find, however, was abdominal discomfort, aggregated behavior, weight loss, low sodium levels, and iron deficiency in her patients. To be clear, I asked for her opinion on MMS-CD. Lindbergh, who is herself an autism expert, replied, I feel that it is potentially very harmful and does not cure autism in any way. Stefan Sarkusek, a writer for Vice, explained that unlike other strains of anti-vaxxers though, many MMS fans believe that vaccines result in parasites, which in turn cause autism. I asked Emily Willingham, a science writer who's written about MMS for Forbes and Thinking Person's Guide to Autism, if she could explain this logic. One of the tenets of the vaccines cause autism movement is that the vaccines contain toxins, that a leaky gut is somehow involved, and that these vulnerabilities lead to parasitic infections, yeast overload, and a host of other weird, unrelated things that need to be treated, Willingham wrote in an email. Indeed, MMS CD enthusiasts are downright obsessed with parasites. On cdautism.org and somewhere else, they post stomach churning photos of what they believe to be rope worms or other parasites passed by their children after oral or rectal doses of chlorine dioxide. The evidence that ropeworms even exist is extremely limited. These ropeworms are most likely long, thin pieces of intestinal lining mistaken for worms. Their posts about children writhing in pain after doses on Vice and NBC News had two women go undercover to find these posts on Facebook. My son is constantly making a gasping sound, posted one Kansas mother who claimed to treat her adult son with chlorine dioxide, according to screenshots shared by Eaton and Siegler. He won't open his mouth, a Canadian mom wrote of her two-year-old's unwillingness to drink the chlorine dioxide. He screams, spits, flips over. This is without a doubt, child abuse. Eaton and Siegler, the undercover reporters, have been contacting police, but they say there hasn't been much success. These pseudoscience practices are ridiculous, but it's worse than that. They're literally torturing children and adults. Hearing this makes me disgusted with not only the parents for doing this to their children, but the so-called church promoting MMS. So next, I decided to take a look into the church itself and see what it is that they actually preach. So I roamed around the about page of the church and I found some of their sermons quite easily. A church, by the way, that he charges people to become a member of. Now, as much as I love you all, I couldn't bear to listen to the entire two hour long sermon posted on their website, but I did want to hear some of it and maybe get a sample of what they're about. Not their MMS. I don't really feel like dying today, but the preaching. Okay, so I got 20 seconds in and I kind of started to burst out laughing. They start their podcast with a tropical island theme song. They have some fantastic lyrics like, it's a health revolution. It's a thorn in the side of corrupt institutions. Chlorine dioxide starts a health revolution. We've got the solution. I, I can't make this up. This place encourages torturing children with bleach and yet has a Hawaiian music sounding theme song. After getting past that amazing introduction, let's try, just try to take the savior of the world seriously here. The pastor speaking is Mark Grennan and he'll come into play more later on. Again, I couldn't bear the entire two hours, but I'll give you all a few wonderful quotes. Don't take the referring to the upcoming beer vaccine, vaccine. 5G gives radiation poisoning to the cells. It shuts down the ability to absorb oxygen. The ventilators are forcing oxygen into people and killing people. Just as a side note, I find it hilarious how this guy is literally gasping for air throughout everything I've seen. I mean, he sounds like he's about to have an asthma attack and I'm almost legitimately concerned for him. But at the same time, he's saying 5G shuts down oxygen and ventilators are forcing people to breathe and kill them. Like what? This is just a giant conspiracy rant. I feel like I've fallen way too far deep down the rabbit hole for once and I'm starting to hear him talk about lizard people. It would make more sense than what I'm hearing so far, if that is what I heard. So at this point, the guy finally addresses that he has paralyzed vocal cords, but alas, MMS doesn't cure that. So I guess that explains the coughing. He says to his co-host here, hey, if you poke your eye out, is MMS gonna cure that? And the guy agrees, no, it wouldn't. Okay, so MMS can cure neurological disorders, but not an injured eye, got it. Wait, it turns out I spoke too soon. He says MMS wouldn't regrow a finger, but then goes, well, maybe it would. 
we were really close guys, we were close. Mark then says that they tortured people in Belgium by injecting this. And I think it's the most nonchalant way I've ever heard someone admit to a crime in my life. Just, oh yeah, we injected a lot of people in Belgium, tortured a lot of people. So we have new protocols now. And uh, yeah, here we are 13 minutes in, 13 minutes in. And I think my brain is actually rotting while listening to this. So after skipping around a bit, Mark says a lady cured her mother of breast cancer and reads a testament about someone's MMS detox. He talks about the medical establishment and then tells people to buy his book. This church is a joke. I'm not even referring to whatever portions of the Bible he picks and chooses to support his rhetoric here. It's just, this isn't even a church. This is a platform where Jim can be surrounded by yes men and people sick enough to drink bleach in some attempt to find a cure. This is a fucking cult. They are drinking bleach instead of Kool-Aid here and it's sick and it's destructive and only hilarious at times because of how ridiculous it gets. I understand why people may be hesitant to say negative things about a religion or church because hey, everyone's entitled to their own beliefs, but I don't really think you're entitled to put bleach down your child's throat. So can we get that straight maybe? So ABC News covered this back in 2016 when the bleach cures autism stance came to light and they said, tests conducted for ABC News show the miracle cure is little more than a chemical that when mixed with citric acid produces chlorine dioxide. Federal prosecutors said it would be useful to clean swimming pools or kitchen countertops, but does not cure autism or anything else. They might as well be selling Clorox, says Ben Miser of the US Department of Justice, who has overseen the prosecution of at least one person selling the miracle cure. You wouldn't drink Clorox, so there is no reason you should drink MMS, he said. But ABC covered a story that took MMS to the next level, death. Doug Nash, a retired NASA scientist, said his wife Sylvia was offered MMS on a sailing trip as protection from malaria and actually passed away from drinking it. She was with him when she was suffering the symptoms and died. He was there. This wasn't some stupid, sick, desperate person that was in a perfect position to be taken advantage of. I know people online like to joke and say it's Darwinism or ask how stupid do you have to be to fall for these types of things. And hey, even I've asked that to myself and publicly quite a few times when I've seen some of these kinds of things. But when someone offers you a legitimate sounding product on a trip where malaria may be more than just a slight risk, and says that this will act as a preventative, I mean, you might fall for it. On the surface, it seems legit and it seems science-based. The people that support MMS are so convinced. So Sylvia trusted a man named Daniel Smith who sold it to her, drank it, and then passed away. Daniel Smith was arrested for distributing MMS as a miracle drug, but only sentenced to four years in prison, four years when a woman's life was lost. And since the church is only taking donations for this glorified bleach rather than technically selling it, prosecuting them as well, pretty difficult. A video from ABC News shows their pastor, Mark, from the church's website, making claims that one drop an hour will treat everything from prostate cancer to autism to HIV. And hey, I'm not saying bleach doesn't have its uses, okay? A very minimal amount to rid water of bacteria can be needed in countries where malaria is in the drinking water, as we said earlier. But that's the only case where I've seen people are safely ingesting bleach in this tiny, tiny minuscule amount in countries without the luxury of clean drinking water. The fact that this church is extorting that, profiting from it and making unsubstantiated claims that can genuinely kill people, I just, I wish I could say I'm more surprised, but we've seen this before and it's more disappointment than anything. And when confronted with any questions, not even evidence, just questions, Mark shoes the reporter away and he's just an actor and the news is all scripted and it's all a lie and he swears at him. What a great pastor calling people fucking liars on national television, a real great example. It's people like that that give churches and pastors such a terrible name. The last thing we've got to cover here today, no surprise, are people claiming that MMS can cure coronavirus. And I'm pretty sure we saw this one coming. So once again, those that believe in drinking this bleach are taking advantage of desperate individuals. Now there's just a lot more of them to choose from. As the novel coronavirus started to spread around the world, the administrators of a fringe medical group on the encrypted app Telegram claimed to be in possession of a cure that was being suppressed by mainstream science. The substance is chlorine dioxide, which they call CD, and is also known as MMS or Miracle Mineral Solution. The group, however, offers no proof that it works. 
How many drops of CD a healthy person or a pregnant woman should take to avoid the virus? One member of the group asked. There is no max dose, an administrator replied. There's only a tolerated amount. I have seen people to be best with 24 to 80 drops over the day. Obviously, the FDA continues to warn people not to do this, and it's frustrating that they even have to, but this time they had to do more. A federal court has entered a temporary injunction against the Genesis II Church of Health and Healing Genesis and four individuals associated with the entity requiring them to immediately stop distributing its Miracle Mineral Solution MMS, an unproven and potentially harmful treatment offered for sale to treat coronavirus, which includes coronavirus disease 2019, COVID-19, and many other diseases. In granting the government's request for relief, the court found that the United States has demonstrated that Genesis and the associated individuals named in the injunction are violating the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetics Act by unlawfully distributing MMS, an unapproved new drug and misbranded drug. When combined with the included activator, MMS has a chlorine dioxide content equivalent to industrial bleach. The court also found that there is a danger that the defendants will continue violating the law without the temporary restraining order. I wish the church were shut down completely because you know that people are still going to try and get their hands on it anyway. Hell, even if the church were closed permanently, I'm sure people would still be out there making it on their own, but at least it's a little harder to get a hold of now. In regards to the FDA's restraining order, CBS reported that Mark Grennan, who is one of the founders of Genesis and referred to as an archbishop, responded to the FDA letter two days later. We can say cure, heal, and treat as a free church, he wrote. We don't need your approval or authorization for a church sacrament. There will be no corrective actions on our part. You have no authority over us, never going to happen. The trouble is that this doesn't come from Genesis 2 and the FDA. It would be one thing if people went online, tried to hunt down a cure and stumbled upon the church. That alone is bad enough, but President Trump has fueled these flames. As much as I really don't wanna make this political, this kind of needs addressing. On April 23rd of 2020, Trump said, I've seen the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute. Is there a way we can do that? An injection inside, almost like cleaning. The White House has since denounced that, stating that Trump was being sarcastic, but it really, really did not come across that way. As I'm sure many of you know, one man passed away after drinking fish tank cleaner because Trump said chloroquine may be effective in treating coronavirus. People are going to take the president at his word and assume he has the answers. So this comment about injecting a cleaning agent is all the ammo people like Jim Humble and Mark Grennan need to promote this MMS. The followers of this bleach movement have even said they were vilified by the media and it's a shame, honestly. They shouldn't feel validated. These people should never, never be validated. I'm not saying that means attack them because attacking them doesn't solve anything, but they most certainly need to be educated, especially now before more people get hurt. So the conclusion to this video, it's pretty simple. Don't drink bleach. Don't feed your children bleach. Yep, I'm putting that right up there on the list of things I didn't know I'd need to say in 2020, but seriously. From convincing parents to abuse their autistic children to charging $450 per person for a two-day healing treatment to notable figures promoting MMS on television, this company is an absolute mess. I feel really strange calling it a church, honestly. Like, it's sort of a business. They fit the definition of a cult, so hell with it. I'll call it as I see it. It's a bleach cult, and it's dangerous. Like I said earlier, I know that there's little point in arguing with these people that are avid believers like Mark Grennan. They'll shout in your face, they'll call you an actor, and sink deeper into denial. But maybe if Sylvia had known what MMS stood for, she'd still be alive today. So with that being said, guys, and unfortunately, that's where I'm going to end today's video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a like. And if you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. If you guys want more content from me, make sure to pop open that description box. You're gonna find links to all of my sources I used for this video, my social media, second channel for my puppy Casper, my collaboration channel with Sad Milk, and so much more. Links for everything will be in the description box down below. So I wanna thank you guys for watching this video. I love you so much and uh, don't drink bleach. Have a good day, guys. Bye.